I think I just did the snack that smiles back goldfish thing. Yeah, that's exactly what I did. Goldfish. Had a lot of coffee right now. Can you tell? Um, I'm in between stuff that I'm working on and I was going over my website and I was thinking like, just thinking about like how I started my website, how the whole thing began, why I use what I use. I actually only pay like $12 a year. Just basically I pay for my domain name and that's the only thing that I pay for to pretty much run everything I do. I've found free ways to do things and then more better free ways have come along. Um, but basically my website started in 2017 uh, May 1st, 2017, which is why I put together a book that is a collection of the web comic that I do over the year and uh, started at May all the way around. So I do like a yearly collection. Makes sense. Think I just said that. I think it's called annual. That's what I meant to say. Yearly collection sounded weird. I'm here today just to uh, ramble on about how I started my website, why I use what I use, and uh, just kind of why I've stuck with it that way. So in 2017, when I started my website, it was on Blogger. I'd been using Blogger for, Blogger is a, a web hosting platform. If you don't know what it is, it's owned by Google. Actually, Google bought it in 2005, I think it is. Before that, it was owned by one of the co-owners of Twitter. Um, uh, what's his name? Uh, Evan, Evan something or other. I think it's Evan. Anyway, he was one of the people that created Twitter. Then later on, he went on to create Odeo, which was a podcasting platform when podcasting first came out. And a little bit of history here. And then they kind of lost interest in the podcasting thing. Like podcasting had just come out and they were hosting it and it was a really cool service. But then they didn't update for a while. And then it turned out they lost interest in it. And what they ended up doing is they wanted to do something that was quicker, microblogging. And they invented Twitter. So... The people who own Twitter owned Blogger beforehand, and uh, it was just a blogging platform, and Google bought it from them, and that's why I use it. I heard about it when I first started out. I didn't know how to run a web server and all that stuff, so I was like, well, I'm going to go with the easy one. Plus, Google made it, so much better. Actually, the first site I created on it was just a test site. It was my own personal blog, um, which is what this is, I suppose, but my original one, and then I created my band website on it, and it kind of grew over the years and I just got used to using it. And I actually learned how to program and got a job in the computer industry, computer industry, the web development industry because of creating a site on Blogger. Cause it also let you go in the background and see all the code and you can mess with it. And I broke several sites doing that. But the beauty is, is Blogger. I actually have like 25 sites on Blogger because whenever I get an idea, I just create a new one. Nobody hears about it. I create the site just to see if I even want to pursue it. If it's something I'll keep doing. And I have tons of sites in there. If I scroll through and look at it where like I had this great idea for something I was going to do. And then I did two posts and lost interest. Didn't cost me anything. Nobody ever saw it. So that's why I use Blogger. It's easy to set up. I know there are tons of other services that are great. I'm just saying why I use mine. It's, and the other reason too is because, um, as I said, I learned how to become a web developer by messing around with Blogger. Then I got a job doing it and I'd go to work and work on websites all day and fix them. And all I did was make them perfect. All I did was fix the design, uh, security updates, and then tweaking things and then setting up the navigation, making it mobile friendly. So when I got home, I had done a couple of sites where I created the way I would, the way I would prefer to do it is I would make my own static generated site, like through Jekyll or something, or I would do WordPress. Problem is, is I made a couple of those sites and it felt like work instead of posting on the site. I was always fixing stuff. So with blogger, I just go, you know what? It has four themes. I can mess with them later. I can, you know, adjust stuff. So I just pick one and run with it. So when I first started this site back in 2017, I didn't do anything to it. I just, I just started posting my comic on it. That was all I needed. Plus it had a mobile app and I use Google photos anyway to back stuff up, which blogger uses Google photos to host their stuff. So the entire thing is very, it's like the 99.9% .9 blogger, Google 
sorry, Google sort of uptime thing. It's rarely down. Your site will rarely get pinged. It's always securely updated, all that kind of stuff. So that's why I use it. Um, I would post my photos. The photos would get backed up in uh, Google Photos, which at the time was called Pica uh, Picasa, and then it switched. A lot of history that I know about this here because I've been doing it for years. But anyway, talking about the site I use now. The other thing too is it gives you a free domain, which is a .blogspot.com domain. And eventually I kept doing it and I was like, I'm going to turn it into a podcast. So I bought a domain name, which you can do right through there. Google just bought a, uh, or just created its own domaining, uh, domaining, uh, its own domain hosting service that's connected directly to Blogger. And it's real easy to use. You go in and you basically just say, I want to use this domain. And it goes, great. It's all set up. Go ahead. You don't have to do any connect it to there, like go through the GoDaddy or name cheap or whatever the hell. Uh, I know all the name servers, but I, I don't want to name them off. Uh, but this way it's just connected right away. And then boom, I had, I had my website set up with a regular domain. Now, and again, I was just posting this. I wasn't telling anybody about it, which is why I wanted a place to put my comic to get used to posting. It possibly could be seen by someone. That's why I didn't just start posting it to Facebook or posting it to Twitter, which I do now, but I post it to go to my website. And that's the other thing too, is if I just did it to Facebook, well, in the past year, Facebook pages is totally getting buried. Like if you have a group, you see group stuff all the time on Facebook, but the pages, like nobody sees the pages anymore. Anyway, so I was creating that and the domain name cost me $12 a year. And when I switched it to TomRay'sWebsite.com, because I had a different one before, really easy. It had RSS feeds built in and then they put an encapsulate thing so you could actually just take the feed from your site and put it up to iTunes and it would go, oh, there's a media file in there and it would create a podcast automatically. Brilliant. Worked out great. But uh, so I was doing it because of that and I could host my uh, podcast directly on there. And then Anchor came along and that's what I use now, which is another free service. And I just post it to that. Um, oh, and Google domains. Let's, so if you have a Gmail account, this is the other thing. So all my stuff, I use Gmail for or, uh, Google for everything. So it kind of connects all these things, docs and all this. Now, I know there's a way that you can buy the Google Suite thing and then you get a custom email. Well, if you buy your domain name from Google on Google Domains, it has an option that lets you use an email forward. So if you have an existing Gmail account, so I have Tom at TomRay'sWebsite.com for an email, but technically it sends it to my Gmail and I didn't have to buy the whole Google Suite thing. It's just, it comes with the domain. You can turn it on. It's a feature in there. If you go into Google domains and it's in the settings and it goes, do you want to create a forward for this? What email should it forward to? They can send it to my website email, which is Tom at Tom website.com. Brilliant, right? Makes sense. Um, so I use it because of that. That doesn't cost anything. That's part of the buying the domain for $12 a year thing. I just really enjoy it. Another thing too is like when I upload my uh, cartoon, directly to the site and because it has a mobile app. So I usually do it directly from my phone on the, the blogger app, which they've updated recently and is a lot better. Um, when I upload that, then I go to, I, I have other sites that I share my comic on now. Comic con. Ha. Huh. Uh, I share my web comic on a site called tapas, which is meant for web comic artists and a site called uh, Webtoons. Now I draw my, I don't have my tablet with me here, but I draw my comic on my tablet. And when I save it, I, the folder it saves to is automatically set up to back it up onto my Google Photos account. So then I can then add that to my blogger post, right? So then I post my comic to the website and the way that I share it. Now, what I would normally have to do is in Tapas, you can create a web comic that is 900 pixels wide. In Webtoons, you can create a comic that is... 800 pixels wide. So two different sizes. Plus I want the large size for my website, especially if you click on it and zoom in. So I'd have to make three different things for this. And the trick that I found since it's hosted by Google photos is when I post it to my website through blogger, I can go to that post that I just did, right click on the photo, the web comic that I made and open it up in a new tab. And when I open that up in the address bar, it shows you the size like at the end of the address right next to the whatever .jpg there is. I can change that to 900 
hit enter. And Google, because it does this for optimization, like on mobile devices, it actually rewrites in real time photos on your website. If you ever look at the code inside of Blogger, there's several links to different size specifications to each photo that's uploaded because it makes it quicker and it goes, oh, if it's this wide, generate this big of a picture. So Google Photos actually regenerates pictures and renders them instead of going like, okay, now I've created the comic, now I gotta uh, put it into whatever photo editor I have, resize it, download it, resize the other one, download it, then upload that. What I do is, like I said, I right click on the photo on my website, open it in a new tab, look at the address bar, switch the W1200 to W900, hit enter, it resizes the photo, I download that, then I go up to the address bar again, hit W800, resizes the photo, I download it, then I put those on the two different webcomic sites that I have. And I don't have to go, I didn't have to open up an editor or anything, it takes me just a few seconds, super simple. I love that I found that feature. I don't remember when I discovered that it did this, but it's a really cool feature. It also helps for like when I'm uploading stuff to different websites or like a profile picture. Anything that I have in Google Photos, I can just right click on it or look at the address on it from my Google Photos and switch the width or the height. It does it by whatever the widest part is and it will resize the photo. I can take like a 1400 square, a 1400 pixel square image for an icon that I have, like say I use it for everything, but one of them goes, no, you can only upload a 300 pixel wide one. So I just change that in the address bar. It resizes it and I download it and use that. Boom. I, I use it all the time. I literally use that feature every day. Anyway, wanted to share that. And that was very thorough explanation. Not sure if any of it was understood. Makes sense to me because I use it all the time. But that is uh, one of the other things that happens on the website that I run and why I started it on Blogger. Um, I'm sure, I mean, you can use it for... Google photo, or you can do it on Google photos anyway, without having a website on blogger. It's just, it's something that's built into it. And the other thing too, is that, uh, you can also generate money from ads. Like AdSense is owned by Google and it's built right into blogger. You don't have to have it on. I have it on, on my website because, and I'm not really a fan of it. And I was like, Oh, neat. I can generate ad revenue. It doesn't pay that much. It's not bad. It's about the same as like putting my music on Spotify. Like it's, you know, maybe I'll make 25 bucks in a month or two months, something like that. But the problem is, and the reason that I still have it on is that they don't pay out until you've reached a hundred dollars. So I've had it on this long and I'm like, it's so close to just paying me out and then I'll turn it off. Uh, maybe mess around with it later, but that option is built in and you can generate revenue from AdSense, especially if you get more traffic. Most of my stuff is looked at at other places and then people come into the website. Anyway, um, I just wanted to bring that up because I know I talk to a lot of people on the podcast that say they want to start a website or they've created like a Squarespace site, which Squarespace just too expensive. If you're not building, if you're not making enough money to actually keep it going, like, what is it like $30 a month? Um, it's just, it's just annoying to pay that all the time. And this is just a free option. Like I said, I create my websites whenever I have an idea. I have tons of websites that nobody even sees. And that's the beauty of it too. So it's just an option that I have. That's what I use. People have gone to the website. I've talked to people because of my website. So I just wanted to share how I do it. And also uh, the new podcast, I'm going to start recording them very soon. I want to talk to artists of from Madison. I actually have my studio set up where my band practices. Uh, I want to do in-person stuff. Got a whole setup there with two mics, cameras, and all that kind of stuff instead of just doing the conferencing thing. But I am going to do the conferencing thing for people that aren't based in Madison. Would love to talk to any artists who are interested. If you have something you want to talk about, promote, just talk about how you create things. Basically, if you can, if, if you feel like having a conversation and talking about what you make, reach out to me, go to tomrayswebsite.com or just reach out to me at Tom, no, Tom at tomrayswebsite.com. That's a lot weird to say an email right after that whole bit. Anyway, that's how I run my website. That's how it started. That's why I use what I use. I could advance someday to a different platform, 
maybe if I really start having problems with Blogger. But right now, it does what I need to do, and I don't spend a lot of time tinkering with it. So, thank you again. Gonna have some more coffee. Clearly, I've had enough, but still good. Talk to you later. So long. Thank you.